Hi everyone, I, I'm Jessica and I'm from MIT. I just graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering. And <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, and my team and I uh, created a product called Tactile. Tactile is a device that converts printed text to Braille in real time. And for those of you who may not know what Braille is, it's the uh, written language for people who are visually impaired. So these are raised dots that form different characters, and you may have seen them around bathroom signs, elevators, and other public spaces. Uh, but before I go into what our product is, uh, I want you to meet our mentor, Paul. So Paul works here as the MIT co-director of community relations, and he actually lost his vision when he was just three years old. And when he was growing up, he didn't have the same access to textbooks and information as his friends did. Well, why is this? It's because only less, uh, less than 1% of all printed texts have Braille versions. Think about that. Think about all the information we encounter, but you can only uh, access less than 1% of that. The reason for this is because Braille is very, very expensive to make. It takes a long time to emboss paper to form all these bumps, and it's a very expensive process. Uh, think about the Bible, for example. For us, it's a compact you know, book, but for it to be in Braille form, it actually takes 40 books. It's one bookshelf just to have the entire uh, Bible. As a result, only very, very popular printed texts ever get transformed into uh, Braille versions. Uh, now, there are existing Braille readers out there, but these Braille readers are really expensive, the technology is very outdated, and they only transcribe electronic documents. So if you want to read some printed text, you first have to find some uh, electronic document form in PDF, Word, and put down an SD card, and then insert that SD card on your device before you can even start to read it. This excludes a lot of information you can't easily get electronic versions of, like a menu, or if you get a uh, pamphlet, or if you see some sort of uh, brochure um, somewhere. It's just very difficult to access electronic uh, document versions of that. Um, another uh, uh, question people have asked us is, well, why not just do text to audio? Do we even need Braille? Uh, there are apps out there that can let you take picture of text and will just read back the text for you. Uh, the issue is that audio is not literacy. So being literate is the ability to you know, form your own independent thoughts and communicate with others. And, uh, and Braille is the only print equivalent for people who are visually impaired. And it's very essential to communicate that way. And another issue is that in education, it's very hard to learn subjects purely through audio. It's a lot easier to uh, remember things when you read it. Uh, think about if you had to learn math or music, these notation-heavy subjects, only by people like reading that out to you. If you have to solve your integrals purely by uh, you know, visualizing in your head what people are telling you. That's a very, very difficult process. Uh, so we decided to you know, tackle this, uh, this gap in the market but technology by creating a product called Tactile. Tactile is a portable electronic device around the size of a smartphone and it's composed of a refreshable Braille display on top and a camera system on the bottom so that people who are visually impaired can say, go to a restaurant or open up any page in a textbook, scan that page of text, and then immediately start reading the Braille uh, translation of that at their own pace with panning buttons. Um, and this opens up a world, a limitless uh, world of possibilities of printed text they can access. So we started this project a little over a year ago, actually at a hackathon. And since then, we've iterated through uh, many prototypes. We are on our fourth prototype right now. And we still have a long way to go. But our current prototype is a standalone battery-powered device. Um, we have uh, a camera, and then we have a couple Braille cells. But we still need to work on this whole uh, camera system because we want uh, the camera to be close to the page as possible, so it's easy to align. We don't want people to have to hold our device from the piece of paper and try to align it that way, because that's very difficult if you don't know where the text is. Uh, another problem we're trying to address is how can we really shrink down the Braille mechanism? The size of Braille is less than the tip of your fingers. That's very, very small. So we're just shrinking down our mechanism uh, to be reliable on that scale. So we create Tactile to help the 1.3 million legally uh, blind individuals in the US. And 
uh, outside of the US, there are even more people who are in need of this device, especially in developing countries where access to Braille is even more limited. And we hope we can create, uh, tactile can give independence and freedom in everyday life. And of course, I'm standing up here presenting, but I can't do this without uh, my teammates. We are all uh, recent MIT grads from various disciplines. And while we started this project around uh, a year ago, we've all been really good friends since freshman year. Um, and we all come from various departments and majors at MIT, and we are in our uh, backgrounds really complement each other to ha have the complete skill sets to make tactile a reality. And we also like to thank uh, all these uh, sponsors who have either provided us with funding money because we're working on this as a side project. We don't, we're not actually affi affiliated with MIT, so we can't get lab space or money uh, directly from uh, a professor at lab. So we uh, are super thankful to these uh, sponsors who have given us grants, uh, provided mentorship, as well as um, helped us uh, achieve our patent pending status right now. And I would say uh, the Biggest takeaway I, uh, for invention, especially in assistive technology, is just to remember who you are designing for. Just when you get frustrated, think back to the users you're designing for and think about the social uh, impact you can make. Um, we were working on this during our junior and senior year of college, and that was a very busy time for all of us. We were working on you know, capstone classes, we were trying to write senior, senior thesis, work our, our our own independent research project, and there would be times when we'd be so busy, so sleep deprived, we think, well, is this really worth it? Should we keep going? But then we would meet with Paul, or go to Perkins School for the Blind, uh, work with the students there, or receive a you know, kind email from a parent, teacher, a student, just encouraging us about how much our device would mean to them, and it just gives us the motivation to keep moving forward. So I would say, when you feel frustrated, just take a step back, and think about you know, why are you really doing this and think about the impact you can make. Uh, so we're really excited about the direction that Tactile is heading towards. Uh, there's still a lot of work to do, but we are, we are um, very passionate about assistive technology. And we hope you guys can share our enthusiasm. Thank you very much. All right, we do have a couple minutes for questions. Looks like we have one right here. Uh, you mentioned that this device is, you said, no bigger than a smartphone. About the size of your smartphone, yes. About, about the size of a smartphone. How do you plan on handling text that is wider than the width of the device? Yeah, so um, if this is like a large page of text, we will have a scanning mechanism in place where we will have the user scan across the entire page of text, and through our algorithm, we would image stitch this uh, all the pictures we've taken together to form that complete text. So you don't need to feel like you need to do it in one go. Oh, okay, and then it would roll through it and create the text for them to read. Exactly. Okay, we have one other question right behind you. How will you be able to handle text that is very far away from where you are, like in the like the text on that presentation compared to my position? Yeah, that's a very good question. So like I described the, our device, it has a camera system on the bottom, and that's really for like scanning close text. But we are integrating a smartphone uh, compatibility. So for example, if you see some, uh, if there's some text that far away you would like to read, you can sync up via Bluetooth with your smartphone, have your smartphone take a picture of that text, and then send it to our system to read. Uh, looks like we have another question right up here behind you. Through like word to word, um, but like it, I'm guessing there's a limit to how many characters you can show. How do you go through? Uh, yeah. So um, in the model we showed, we had two rows of 18, so that's 36 characters. And the reason why we selected 36 character is because the average sentence is anywhere from like 15 to 30 characters. So we want to be able to fit a full sentence in one line. And once you scan this text, it will display one line, and then you have buttons on the bottom to pan to the next line. Or if you, want to, if you forgot what you just read, go back to the previous line. And you can read at your own speed. 
Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> Natasha.